Over the next few days, we're gonna be tackling a pretty important project for us, which is upgrading our solar system. When we bought Acadia, she came with a small solar setup that was pretty much just enough to run the refrigeration in the sun on a sunny day. Since then, we've added our Ingle freezer, which came from Macola, and quite a few laptops, drones, and cameras, and things like that, which use quite a bit of electricity. So the 200 watt setup that came on the boat isn't quite cutting it for us anymore. Right now, to keep up with our electrical demands, we're running the engine pretty much every day. Traveling down the ICW, it's not a huge deal, but we're gonna be heading over to the Bahamas soon, and we just don't wanna to have to keep that up because a, it's just burning diesel unnecessarily, and it's really not that great to be running an engine at low load for quite a bit of time. So we're gonna upgrade our solar system. We're gonna upgrade the solar on top of our Bimini from these two 100 watt panels to two 200 watt fixed panels, which should provide quite a bit more output. And we're gonna move these flexible panels to on top of the Dodger and have one extra to kind of float we may mount it in a filler piece that goes between the Bimini and the Dodger. We're quite not, not quite sure at the moment. But we do know is we're gonna mount two 200 watt fixed panels on top of here, on top of the Bimini, which should solve our power shortcomings in the near term. So for this project, we're using obviously two solar panels, two 200 watt rich solar solar panels. We've used these on a Cola. They've been great for the last 18 months. So we just ordered the same thing again. And we're using the pretty much gold standard Victronic charge controller. We've used cheaper ones and not been very happy with them. So these things are middle of the road price range for charge controllers and super easy to set up and super easy to use, which is why they're so popular. We're gonna have two charge controllers, one for each panel. Part of the reason is the boat came with a charge, one of these charge controllers. So I'm gonna reuse one of those and then install this second one to run the other panel. And these are 100 volt input, 20 amp output. So they can accept voltages of up to 100, 100 volts from the panels and will output up to 20 amps to the battery. Solar panels come with these waterproof MC4 connectors. And I like to buy just these pigtails just so I can crimp them onto standard marine wire instead of either cutting off the connector off the panel or buying the crimper and the connectors and doing up these connections yourself. Buying the pigtails is just really convenient. And then what's making this project kind of possible was these nice brackets. So these brackets mount on top of the Bimini tubes and allow you to mount things on top of the Bimini. And these come from Gemini Marine Products in Rockland, Maine. The key to this project was fabricating the custom brackets. Andy drilled out the aluminum plate so that the two panels could be joined together in the middle of the bimini. After a couple of quick test fits, the bracket was installed and then the panels were mounted on top. On the four outer corners, the plan was to use aluminum bar to create arms that would keep the panels level and securely attached. Andy installed one end of each bar so that he could get an idea of how he needed to bend each bar. We were really high tech with the bending here. Who needs a bench vise when you have an outboard mount, a clamp, and an adjustable wrench? Pretty freaking close.
The last step was to wire the panels. Because the wiring is done in really tight and dark spaces, we've made a little chart to explain how it all hooks together. Hold on, this is about to get technical. We start at the solar panels. Each of the 200 watt panels is connected to a dedicated 20 amp Victron charge controller. These are slightly oversized, but they came with the boat, so we decided to reuse them. The two 100 watt panels and the optional additional 100 watt panel are wired in parallel and connected to a 15 amp charge controller. Each charge controller is connected to the fuse block, which is then connected to the main DC positive bus via a circuit breaker. The bus bar is then connected to a fuse before connecting to the batteries. We have 300 amp hours of lithium iron phosphate batteries, which are very sensitive to temperature and charging voltage. We use a Victron smart battery sense to accurately sense the voltage right at the batteries and feed that information to the charge controllers. This way, any voltage drop in the wiring doesn't affect charging voltage. Let's do a quick cost breakdown on this project. Two 200 watt rich solar panels came to $460. Three 100 watt Renogy flexible panels would have been $479, but we already had them, so it cost us nothing. Five solar adapter pigtails would have been 25, but we had two, so it only cost us 15. Six Gemini rail mounts were $132. The aluminum plate was 29. The aluminum bar was 23. The extra wire we needed was $52. Two 20 amp Victron charge controllers would come to $315, but we had them to reuse. One 15 amp Victron charge controller was $118. The Victron Smart Battery Sense was $39, but we already had it, so we were reusing that as well. The Blue C six circuit fuse block was $31. The Blue C circuit breaker was $42. And the Blue C 150 amp bus bar was $27. We had all three of those items, so that cost us $0. Our total cost on this project was $829, but the total cost, if you had to buy everything, would have been $1,772. I've included a link to our blog post and the Amazon list that have all the parts we use for this project in the description of this video. It's been six months since we installed the solar setup here on Acadia, and we are really happy with the way it's turned out. The Bimini mounts have held up great. There isn't any weird vibration with wind or anything like that. And because the panels are aft of the boom, we really haven't had any issues with shading at all. It also looks really good. It doesn't, it's not too obtrusive and it doesn't really detract from the lines of the boat. We have decided to semi-permanently install our flexible panels. One is installed on top of the Dodger. Another is installed just forward of the Dodger on the cabin top, on top of the spray hood. And then we have one more that we stick onto a filler piece that goes between the Dodger and the Bimini. The cabin top panels are poorest performer as they have the most shading, but if we move the boom out of the way and kind of, and kind of pay attention, to which side we should move the boom, they work pretty well. As always, we're happy to try and answer any questions you might have in the comments below. And if you're one of our patrons, you'll find a wiring diagram for this whole system in the resource library. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. I'll let you bolt things onto Bimini's. Pretty spiffy, if you ask me. Did you just break the table? I did not break, just break the table. Okay.